I know it's not the end of the year just yet. It is approaching the middle of the year, and as such, lists like best books of 2021 so far will be coming out pretty soon. Also, lists like worst books of 2021 so far will be coming out too. And a number of people have complained about that. Should they really complain? Hi, I'm Marcus, and I'm the idiot on the writer's block. If you're new to the channel, I, the idiot, ask experts for tips on how to write, publish, and promote my first fiction novel. I've already had a graphic novel come out. It's called Culliver City Chronicles, call 1-800-KILLER-GUY, book one. Check in the description below for links as to how to buy the book. Also, click on this link right here to get the review done by Blurred Without Fear. If you like crime, neo-noir, graphic novels like Sin City and Criminal and 100 Bullets, then Culver City Chronicles Call 1-800-KILLER-GUY is for you. And don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe for more videos on how to write, publish and promote your first fiction novel. Now, props to Izzy Mongu for her video in December last year on this particular topic. The link to that video is right here. But it got me thinking, and it made me want to ask my experts that particular question. I wondered what my experts thought about the idea that if there were lists such as best books of the year, there should also be lists such as worst books of the year. I have my opinion on it too, but wait till after my experts have spoken to hear what I think about it. So I decided to throw the question on the writer's block. Should there still be worst books of the year reviews. And here are my experts giving their opinion on whether there should still be lists such as worst books of the year. Well, you know, it's a little bit mean, isn't it? Like, and if you didn't get on the best books of the year list, then it's generally you kind of know where you stand, right? So there's no need to kind of like put the knife in and be like, oh, and on top of that, you made the worst books of the year list. <laughs> you know, I, I just think it's mean. I just think there's no real need for it. And, uh, you know, you, yeah, you don't really need to call people out on it. You know what? The Bad Sex Award, I'll take that off because I think that's quite funny. And like a lot of people, a lot of authors are like, all right, the hands up, all right. <laughs> and like, you know, and, and if, if I ever got on it, I thought I was pretty close a couple of times. <laughs> but like, I wouldn't be so, I wouldn't be so bad, you know. But um, yeah, I think worst books of the year, I don't know what purpose does it serve, you know, to, to, to do that to people, you know. I, I, I'm not really a fan of that, I have to say. I'll, I'll be on it now. <laughs> as, a, as a writer, it, the thing is, reading and literature is so subjective. What one person thinks is the worst book <laughs> will be the best book for other people. There have been books out there that people have loved and I have not loved, to put it mildly. I think that th there's no way we can stop the list from existing. And for, and for some, it might be a great way to learn what po what's popular to rag on, what's popular to avoid. But I'm, I'm always of the mind that there's there are so many readers out there. There are so many different types of books. I think that there people will find a niche for the most part. And a, a worst book <laughs> is it, by what by what standards? That's my question. How how what what are the standards that someone used to qualify worst? So that's just my opinion. Should there not be worst books of the year lists? Uh, <laughs> I think there's a serious problem with it because define worst book. You can't. Um, it's uh, book reviewing and, and film and TV reviewing and play reviews. Every type of review is very, very subjective by its nature. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with reviews. But when it comes to books, I think there's, there's such a huge selection of books out there. I mean, there's far more books out there than if every person alive today tried to read every book before they died, like we, we couldn't because there's so many books. There's, 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 I'm not going to say there's too many because you can never have too many books. I mean, you only need to look at all the shelves in my house to know that. <laughs> but um, I really, no, I really do disagree with uh, the idea of worst book lists. Um, like, for example, I got a, a stinker of a one star review. Uh, from someone who who, wrote, who read my book, and um, which which is fine. But as I read the review, I realized, oh, this is not your kind of book. You don't like this, not because it's badly written. It's because you don't like this kind of story. Like they complained about there being violence. 
name a thriller where there isn't violence. It, she complained about th- it being really dark. It was like, have you seen the cover? <laughs> like, I was, not, I'm, not, I'm not, like, obviously people are entitled to their opinions, um, especially when they're wrong, they're still entitled to them. But, <laughs> you know, if, if you don't like a book, that doesn't mean it's a bad book necessarily. Having said that, there are definitely books out there where authors sometimes publish them without giving them a, a second look over. Um, and I have read many of those books, but knowing how difficult it is to put your to self-publish and to put your own stuff out there, I when I come across the book that if I had to review it, I would give it a one star. I just don't review it. Um, just because I, I, I feel like I'm only hurting the chances of that author getting other people getting their book out in front of other people. Um, especially if you're reviewing on Amazon, because Amazon values the most recent reviews more than the initial reviews. So, for example, <clears throat> I have a lot of five star reviews on my book, but because they were all around the time that it came out, that one star review that came really affected the rating of my book. Not that I not that I really mind, there's lots of other places you can buy my book. But I, th- I think I think giving one star reviews like that is it, fine, but keep it to yourself. Um, unless unless the book is an, an individual attack on you, why uh, Marcus should not be a writer written by Conor Braden McCom? Yeah, you can save that book. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, should they? I mean, I don't. I don't know if they should exist or not. I will say authors should not read them. <laughs> Um, cause that's kind of just demolishing your, uh, your, if your book's on that list, I don't know, it could just kill your, your creativity and your, you know, desire to get out of bed in the morning. Um, I, my person, I don't know who would want to write those lists. I, my own belief is that we should be building other people up. And yes, there are books out there that I've read that I'm like, this is a bad book, but you could still find something good within it. You know, it's um, it's the thing about books is they're so subjective. Um, So what may be a really bad book to someone is a good book to someone else. Um, And so I, um, I don't know, I, I, I'm just thinking of, you know, not long ago and one day I had an editor get back to me saying, you know, passing on a project because they didn't connect with the voice. They thought it was not a great middle grade voice and they were quite clear on that. Within like two hours, I got another uh, email from another editor saying, I love this book. I love the middle grade voice. I'm taking it to acquisitions. How, I mean, so that's just just an example of how subjective the book industry really is. Um, so uh, my advice would be, if those books are out there, those lists are out there, and you are a writer, don't read them. Um, and this is where I think as a writer, you really can um, utilize your friends and your critique partners. I have um, friends who will not read any reviews on themselves, but their critique partners will read them all. And when there are good ones that they think will build their friends up, they pass them along. So I think, um, you know, utilizing your friends to help screen what reviews you read is a good thing. (laughs) If you stayed this long, you want to hear my opinion on the matter. And here it is. I'm all for worst books of the year reviews. For one, if you're going to have a celebration of fantastic books in the year, then you must have the complete opposite. You have the Oscars and the Razzies. There must be some way to balance out what the accolades are. Secondly, it's like I said with the bad review video, any review is a good review. It's publicity for your work. Because let's face it, if someone considers your book to be bad enough that they will dedicate time to put it on a list and talk about it in public, that's a good thing. It means other people will hear about your book and in which case they would say, is it that bad? If it is, I'm gonna check it out to see. Thirdly, just because one person thinks that your book is bad doesn't mean that everybody thinks it's bad. Who knows? Those people who watch the video might gravitate towards your book, pick it up and say, what is this guy talking about? This book is great. Now I'm speaking as someone who more than likely is going to have one of his books appear in one or many worst books of the year lists. And I'm telling you right now, 
and you can keep this as the receipts. I will gladly watch any video that has one of my books in the worst lists of the year review. Because like I said, it is free publicity and I would thank anyone to do so. I mean, let's hope you put it on the other side, right? I mean, the best books of the year. I prefer that, but I would still be happy going with worst books of the year if you want to. So feel free to put my books in any one of the two. I will be grateful for the publicity. Thank you to all my experts for sharing their time to tell me what they think about the idea of the worst books of the year list. Please check in the description for links to their work. Go and support them. Watch their videos, read their books, and say hi to them from the Idiot on the Writer's Blog. And don't forget to check out other videos on this channel and like, share, comment and subscribe for more tips on how to write, publish and promote your first fiction novel. I'm Marcus and I'll see you next time.